Hey, wrestling fans, welcome to the One Wing Wrestling Podcast, where we help you navigate the complex world of pro wrestling, bring you the best matches, world class wrestlers, and news you can count on. At One Wing Wrestling, we bring the elite to you. My name is Krishna Nye, and joining me as always, but in a different way today, is Mr. Bill Cupbush. Now, this is the part where I'd always say, Bill, how's it going? Bill, unfortunately, had um, prior arrangements that he could not, um, unfortunately, um, avoid um, or that he needed to attend um, and just couldn't make it today. So what we're going to do is um, he is technically going to make it. So, you know, with the with the magic of uh, editing, uh, he will join the meeting. So he's going to record a portion. I'm going to record a portion. Then he's going to splice everything together and it's going to seem almost like we weren't on at different times actually it probably is going to sound like we were on at different times but regardless we are going to give our thoughts because this is our weekly podcast where we do give um, updates on some wrestling news we you know review matches from the previous weeks and uh, or week i should say and uh, we give you know our best matches our best wrestlers and, and so on but we normally start off with the news but now before i start off with the news I want to just give um, just a, a temperature check, and this is going to be a temperature check on the, uh, well, just on the city of Toronto, I should say. No, literal temperature-wise, it's a pretty nice day today. I think it was like 18 degrees outside, so very, very, very nice. However, um, eight days ago, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs finally, after 19 years, was able to, you know, advance past the first round. Now, I know any hockey fan around the world is kind of thinking, really, you celebrated, you know, advancing past the first round? The answer is yes. Unfortunately, we are that, that I guess, uh, tarnished as a fan base. Now, that was eight days ago. I mean, I obviously, like, I'm a, I'm a Leaf fan, and I'll always be a Leaf fan. But, you know, I've been trying to show them some tough love because, realistically, this team, they just don't get it so you know for a while now i've been trying to show them t- some tough love but every time they get they get into the playoffs which is frequently i i kind of you know say you know what maybe this year maybe this year well the leaf fans uh eight days ago they celebrated the victory you know which they should but part of me said you know i is only for the first round so you know i thought hey you know they're gonna face off against the florida panthers the fans in the um i guess they call it Maple Leaf Square. Uh, they were chanting, we want the Panthers, we want Florida, something like that. Um, and be careful what you wish for. Because now, eight days later, the Panthers and Leafs have, pay- have played three games out of the best of the seven series. And the Panthers have won every single game. Which means the Leafs are on the brink of elimination. What does this mean? Well, this means that really... There shouldn't have been a surprise to Leaf Nation, but Leaf Nation, like they, they tend to forget easily what's happened. Even though the other fans uh, um, of the um, other teams will remind the Leaf Nation every every chance they get, which deservingly so, Leafs, you know, they kind of deserve it. Um, yeah, they're in a bit of a meltdown at the moment. Uh, listen, only I think four teams have ever come back from a three zero deficit. Well, the Leafs being one of them back in 1942. Um, different time, different team. Um, yeah, it's just not something that normally happens. Now, I'm not going to say this is something that can never happen. I'm just saying that this is something that statistically should not happen. Um, so, yeah, uh, Leaf Nation's about to to melt down. Uh, my thoughts, my feelings on this, well, you know, I should have seen this coming. I don't know why I put my blinders on. I, I Even myself, I was like, yeah, it's Florida. It, it, it couldn't be easier, could it? Well, I guess not. I guess it, it was actually harder than uh, than we thought. Uh, so th- down 3-0, um, I'm, I refuse to watch another game. Like, it's it's just not worth my time. I think the next game, game four, is on um, on Wednesday, I believe. Um, so I'd rather be watching uh, Dynamite than and watching Kenny Omega versus John Moxley than watch the Leafs just get smoked. Like, like a sweep... If, like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Leafs got swept. Like it, I, I have no faith in this team. And honestly, I think my, my friend Ryan put it the best. He's like, I, when I said, you know, I don't think we should even watch this game. He said, why should we? He said, they've given up on themselves. So why why do we owe them anything, right? 
And he's right, you know, as a fan base who, who you know, they, they, they're diehards, I guess. Um, they This team has given them nothing. So to my fellow Lee fans out there, I'm really sorry. Uh, like this, I, I wish, I, and for the young fans too, who've never really seen uh, the Leafs success at all. Like, I mean, listen, I've seen the Leafs get to like maybe the conference final and stuff like that. But for the young Leaf fans who don't even know what it feels like to get past, well, now the second round, um, I feel for you. I feel for you. Um, I, I, it, it's terrible, but hey, you know what? It's just a game. Um, I, I doubt players give up. Like I'm, I'm. I, I don't think anyone goes out there and tries to lose. Like I never. I don't think that's that's the case. Um, but yeah, you know, Lee fans, I feel your pain. Um, one day, one day, Lee fans, one day. Anyways, that's Toronto. So again, complete meltdown mode right now. But uh, that's Toronto. Switching from the Toronto report, I should say, and switching into some news now. Bill probably knows a lot more about the the items that he kind of told me about today. So uh, I'm going to speak to just a couple items. Um, first of all, uh, the Wembley Stadium um, all-in sales uh, have been released. Now, this, these were pre-sales, and I th- I'm, I'm not sure if it's only pre-sales. However, that being said, uh, said um, it looks like AEW sold about approximately like 50 thousand tickets i don't know the exact number Fifty thousand. that is astonishing regardless of what you think Fifty thousand tickets is absolutely amazing for AEW. now i know people are saying oh well it's not the full stadium and and um oh well it's only for resellers do you think AEW cares if bots and resellers bought these now i think there were there were actual codes that were given out so i think very hard for bots to buy them um or resellers if you're a reseller like you're gonna buy all these tickets and try to resell them at a higher price what are the chances you're gonna make all that money back right so regardless i mean whatever it is what it is all i all i'm thinking is fifty thousand tickets all in what what great numbers for AEW? What what a positive story after all the negative stuff I just spoke about. What a positive story! Like, hey, AEW is a competitor, and I'm so happy that uh, it's recognized. Like, hey, Wembley Stadium, that is amazing, absolutely amazing. So, so shout out, congrats to AEW. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a fantastic show. You know, it really is going to be a fantastic show, Krishna. And yes, I am here, though I come to you from the future. Spooky, eh? The Wembley ticket sales. Yeah, oh yeah, it's going to be a fantastic show, all right. Look, and I'll just, quick correction to what you said, Krishna. They actually have sold over 60,000 tickets at this point with a gate of over $7.7 million. Okay, this wrecks every company record in AEW, of course. It will also likely break the record for the largest non-WrestleMania first day ticket sales, which happened with the 1992 SummerSlam at the old Wembley Stadium, which was 55,000 tickets. It will also likely beat the total paid attendance WWE got for Clash of the Castle last year on the first day of general public sales. Um, Meltzer described this. If they actually beat that on their first day of sales, which I believe is this Friday? I'm not sure when the first actual general public sale is, but Meltzer described this as a big shocker. Remember, all of these numbers are pre-sales. They haven't even opened it up to general sale yet. The all-time record, though, is the 2016 WrestleMania, which sold 79,800 tickets and had a gate of 17.3 million. AEW probably won't beat that. Keep in mind, too, this success AEW has had with these ticket sales is based on not a single match being announced for this card. It is simply that they are trusting there's going to be such an amazing show at Wembley Stadium that people have bought over 60,000 tickets without a single announced match. That is crazy. Now, of course, they haven't their benefit. It's the first time they're running the UK. But that is just nuts. And it really speaks to how well could AEW have done in that first run in Toronto had they done something other than a dinky, tiny little arena in the X, right? Come on, people. You know. Now, speaking of uh, just pivoting a bit and just uh, switching over to um, not so great news, um, 
Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston on, I believe, ROH TV um, announced he's injured. Now, it's a hernia uh, injury, and he's having surgery. He says he's going to be back uh, in about six weeks, give or take. Um, I think, you know, Eddie, I really love Eddie Kingston. I think he's one of the most mismanaged people in in AEW. (laughs) There's a lot. Um, He's so great in the mic. Like, we always joke around about does Eddie Kingston know wrestling is fake <laughs> or scripted? I should say the answer is always no. Um, so, you know, Eddie speedy recovery. I really do hope to see Eddie Kingston back on just regular, um, you know, AEW TV. Like, yeah, sure. He can be on ring of honor, but I, do, I highly prefer him back with, give him a great, a good storyline, give him something. Like, I think he's such a great asset um, and he needs to be utilized. So Eddie, you no, know, we love you here in Toronto. Um, and we're wishing you the best, hoping that you get uh, get better soon. Soon, I should say. Yeah, I mean, seriously, speedy recovery, Eddie. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna miss you, even though you haven't been around the Dynamite TV. I gotta agree with Krishna on this one. I want to see more of him on Dynamite. I I miss seeing him week in and week out. I know he's on ROH and that kind of thing, but you know, I really miss seeing him on Dynamite. He cut such a great promo, and I feel like he hasn't been given the chance to do that, and I just, I want him around more. You know, he's been dealing with this injury, apparently, since September, so he's finally getting the surgery for it, so I'm glad to hear that. I mean, six weeks he's going to be out. That's not too bad. So, uh, you know, speedy recovery, Eddie. We hope we're back soon. Um, and, uh, rampage changes. So I may not know all the rampage changes that are happening. I have heard, um, SRS, so Sean Ross up, he has commented that it seems like, um, uh, rampage is kind of turning out to be the next, um, dark. Cause as we all know, dark, or I don't think it's been fully confirmed, but we know that dark and elevation are going to be removed based on the, um, the agreement uh, for Warner Brothers. Um, so that's going to stop, uh, which kind of sucks because Bill and I talked about this, like what's going to happen with the indie wrestlers. So we're thinking that, or thinking, but what I'm hearing is it, is that it looks like Rampage may be more like a indie show, kind of like the dark and elevation, which is, which is, Hey, you know, if it works, it works. But I have a feeling that the indie wrestlers are going to be showing up on this regular TV, which is great. Get, give them some shots and maybe, you know what? I call them indie, but the, the actual wrestlers signed to AEW and also the, the independent wrestlers who come in for like um, a show or two. Give them a shot. Give them a shot on TV. And, and you know, I say, why not? Like if you're if you're going to feed random people to Jade Cargill and uh, Wardlow, why not give them one of these indie guys and let, let the indie guys shine a bit? Like, I mean, all I've been seeing from Cargill and um, Wardlow are just squash matches. You know, I've seen Kenny Omega on Dark and Elevation. I've seen uh, Moxie on Dark and Elevation. I've seen all the top guys in Dark and Elevation. And guess what? They actually let the the indie guys or uh, or the new up-and-comers, you know, get some spots on them. They actually let them wrestle. And it's 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 great. It's great. Um, I mean, you never think they're going to win, but hey, it, they still get some spots in there. So I'm hoping for the best. I know that, you know, some people are not uh, the best or, or some people are not, uh, you know, they're not going to get the shot. Um, but hey, I'm just hoping that every, that that we don't forget that, you know, the Bucks and all, and all these guys, they started in, in the Indies and and that's what they're known for. So so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for the best, um, but I guess, again, We'll see. We will see. Yeah, I got to agree with you too about the the Rampage changes, Krishna. I am actually hopeful that Rampage becomes something. And Dave Meltzer reported this is what's going to happen. I think he agrees with Sean Rossap on this, that it's going to turn into what Dark and Dark Elevation were, like a showcase for younger talent. Um, it is remaining on TNT, but it is going to sort of take the place of Dark and Dark Elevation. To me, that'll make it almost the must-watch show most weeks because I enjoy Dark and Dark Elevation quite a bit because I like to see the younger talent. I like to see the up-and-comers. You know, I like to I like some of the dumb plots they have in Dark and Dark Elevation, and I'm really going to miss having them around. Um, so, yeah, I actually am kind of looking forward to the change to Rampage, and I miss having Dark and Dark Elevation around right now. Um yeah. Anyway, so power to it. Now, that's all the news I had. So I don't know if Bill's going to edit this right here. 
And yes, I do actually have one more news story, Krishna. Thanks for throwing it over to me in the future. We do know that Yuka Sakazaki is now coming full time to the United States. Uh, TJPW Tokyo, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling announced on May 8th that Yuka Sakazaki has graduated from TJPW and will be based in the U.S. full time starting in 2024. Her final show with TJPW will be December 1st at Korakuen Hall. Um, she's been with that promotion since she started her career in 2013. So this ends a 10 year run with uh, TJPW to come and work. Now, it didn't say she was coming to work in AEW, it didn't say she was coming to work anywhere, but she's just going to be based in the US. Now, you know, read into that what you want. I, I really hope we see a whole lot more of her in AEW. She is a breath of fresh air in the women's division. I love her matches. She is just so full of energy. She, she's such a good wrestler. She is so good at storytelling in the ring. Her facial expressions are, are great. I mean, just if you get a chance, go watch any of her body of work in Tokyo Joshi Pro. Um, I reviewed a match of, of hers for the Princess of Princesses title uh, just a few weeks back. And just a phenomenal, phenomenal match. Um, so yeah, if you get a chance, check out any of her stuff from Japan. But I am, I'm kind of excited she's coming to the US and I wonder what this means for her. I guess we're going to find out in the new year. Pretty exciting new year shaping up in the world of wrestling with all the contracts coming up and the changes. And yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So I'm going to give the, give a breakdown of, or I should say, an AEW report. Now, as we know, Dark and Elevation no longer exist. I actually had to go on YouTube and just validate that. I was like, okay, well, when was the last dark? And it was like, I think that it, it said maybe like 12 days ago or something like that. And I was like, oh, so I didn't miss anything because I thought I had missed it. So really, realistically, it seems like we're going to have, we're going to have dynamite rampage and collision. So until collision starts, you're going to get some, just the rampage updates uh, from me and also the, the dynamite reviews on Wednesdays. So, First off, Rampage, and I think Rampage is actually starting to get known for this. Rampage starts off with some pretty great matches. So this week, uh, Lucha Brothers teamed up with Vikingo, who actually were on the uh, that triple, no, the trios eliminator tournament match on uh, previous last week Wednesday, uh, versus uh, uh, QT Marshall, Aaron Solo, so QT TV, and Powerhouse Hobbs. This match was great. This match was fantastic. This match was my type of match. It had all the flips. It had all, like, everything. Like, all the Lucha stuff that I love. Um, Vikingo, just, he's a star. This guy is absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, he's the AAA championship, uh, champion, I should say. Um, and the Lucha Brothers. It, it, you know, Vikingo ran wild for a bit. And then Ray Phoenix and Penta kind of reminded you, that, hey, you know, we're the top luchadors in the world. Like, look what we can do. And they did. Like, they just went back and forth. The spots with Hobbs where Hobbs was just catching people and reversing. Like, even with QT, QT got some some, some hits in, in um, or I should say, take some, took some. Um, and uh, even even Aaron Solo. Like, Aaron Solo is a, is a really good wrestler. And him and QT, they sell, and they're so good. I really do wish to see more of them. That's why I'm, so I'm kind of glad they're back on QT TV. But if you if you need to watch a great fun wrestling match this week, great match. Check this out: The Kingo Lucha Brothers versus QT uh, Marshall, or such as a QTV and Powerhouse Ops. Fantastic match, my kind of match. So if you like my kind of matches, check it out. Next up, <laughs> quick segment by Jericho. Jericho commenting on why he wasn't on commentary um, for for Rampage. Well, you know, long story short. He was afraid of Adam Cole. That's it. He's a, Jericho is such a clown, and I love every second. He's he's actually afraid of Adam Cole because none of his lackeys were actually there with him. So very, very funny. It's, it's Chris Jericho at his best. I think it's hilarious. Um, we then had Mark Briscoe versus Preston Vance. This was a good match. This was a very good match. You know, this is the one you can tell AEW is trying their greatest just to, like, make things right. With, with with the Briscoes. Um, so Mark Briscoe's family, <laughs> they were at ringside. They were there cheering on uh, uh, Mark. Um, his kids were there. Uh, Preston Vance comes down and like starts mouthing off to the kids. Like, I, I, I this is what I love about wrestling. Like, they, they, they get it. They get it. 
Um, it was this was a good a good match by Briscoe and and Vance. Not again, I'm not the biggest Vance fan, but hey, you know he did his job. Like he's more of a bigger guy with like not a with. I, I hate to use the word limited move set, but doesn't have like a, an expanded move set. Um, so he did he did what he could. Um, you know Mark Briscoe doing some crazy moves like he's he's absolutely he's so much fun to watch um i love his character uh briscoe picks up the win you know this is this is the way to do it picks up the win in front of his family like and you know one it's one of those those matches where you're like this aw you know regardless of, of stuff i have issues with bravo you know good good job good job you're, you're doing good not now for some not so great i should say i was gonna say things but this is really only thing um so dustin Rhodes got beat up by swerve um in the back or whatever um swerve taunting keith lee so i guess this match is still going to take place this has been ongoing for months like i don't i don't even like does anybody care about this match does anybody care about this match anymore i don't think so i really don't think the AEW has missed the mark on this one i don't know what they were doing why this took so long it's like if for anyone playing video games, uh, there used to be a game called Duke Nukem. Everyone liked Duke Nukem. Then they announced Duke Nukem Forever or Duke Nukem the the whatever was going to come out. This game literally took forever to come out to the point where the you know the memes of like will Duke Nukem ever, Duke Nukem ever come out? The answer would always be no. Um, and people are comparing stuff to Duke Nukem Forever. That's what this match is. It's like Duke Nukem Forever. Is it ever going to happen? I just, I just want to move past it, and I'm, I'm sure these guys want to move past it as well. So, you know, let's see. My only negative thing besides, oh, well, I didn't even talk about Jay Cargo, but I don't want to. Um, yeah, it's one of the negative things I need to talk about. Uh, just, I just don't, I don't get it, Tony. I don't get it. Last but not least, from Rampage was the firms. Final deletion match. Now, this was the Hardys with Isaiah Cassidy and Hook versus the firm, which was Ethan Page. Um uh, wow, I was gonna call him uh Big Cass, but Big Bill, um uh Moriarty and Stokely. So this was what you call a cinematic comedy match. I'm not gonna lie. I loved this match it was absolutely so ridiculous it was so over the top that it was it, it, it was basically like the stadium stampede and i gotta remember that the that the final deletion match took place before stadium stampedes ever even happened this match was fantastic from beginning to end it was so ridiculous it was so over the top the wrestling was great the comedy was on point. There was a point in this match where Matt Hardy's wife brings Stokely into a wrestling ring, tasers him, gives him, well, she think he got tasered before, gives him a twist of fate. Then Matt Hardy's son, he's very, very young, climbs up to the second rope and does a swanton onto Stokely. And I'm talking, the swanton looked it looked good for this young, young, really. I'm talking like he, this kid must be like 11. <laughs> if that, if that, fantastic. There there were certain spots where <laughs> Isaiah Cassidy suddenly reappeared after it, what seemed to be uh, Big Bill and, um, and um, um, oh my God, Ethan Page were about to set the Hardys on fire. All of a sudden you heard the, the iconic moan. From Ethan Page, not Ethan Page, sorry, from Isaiah Cassidy. He was on top of this, um, I guess it's like a, not a building, it's like a crate or whatever he was on, and he was suddenly he became Brother Zay. So he was all in black, and he jumped off of it. He did like almost like a swan tom off of that, and 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 then he started moaning. I, I love Isaiah Cassidy. He's so funny. Um, he then, you know, pretty much beat up. Uh, Big Bill, he kind of did a stomp from a ladder onto a table, um, which means that, you know, Stokely was out. Um, I, I I forgot to mention that um, uh, Hook and and um, and uh, Moriarty, they actually had like a pretty cool match, um, uh, but because they're, they're wrestlers and, uh, you know, they, they took it outside and Hook, 
gave like uh, his suplex onto a table, which took Mor- Moriarty out. Um, at the end, it was just Page by himself. He got every single move possible, and and the final del- deletion is completed. Um, you know, kudos to Jeff Hardy. He looked great. He did. He really looked good. And you can tell that by the emotion in his face, like he's having a great time. And 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 uh, yeah, great great match. So yeah, if you it, like, if you can, Rampage was was good. It bookended by two really, really great matches. Um, a really good match in the middle with um with Briscoe, and then just a Jade Cargo match, which no one cares about. So that being said, I'm gonna again. Maybe this is where Bill does his section. Maybe not. Well, yeah, Krishna, I got to agree with you before I get into uh, you know the the news I've got from Japan. I'm gonna talk a little bit about AEW first. I got to agree with you that Lucha Brothers El Hijo del Vikingo and uh, QTV match that was a damn good wrestling match. I had a lot of fun watching that. Um, you know, I I was surprised. The one thing I think that stood out to me, and this is not part of the match as much as it was just surprise, was you know. Penta isn't that much smaller than Powerhouse Hobbs. Like, muscle-wise, yeah. But you see him next to him, he's not that much shorter. He's not that much, uh, you know, skinnier. Like, he actually looked not, like, not exactly the same size. So I was like, whoa, you know, Penta's bigger than he actually seems. I guess because he always hangs out with, like, luchadors, right? And in Pac and stuff. And he doesn't seem that big. But standing right next to Powerhouse Hobbs, I was like, oh, he's really not that small. Anyway, I don't know why that stuck out to me there, but it did. But, yeah, the moves and stuff are great. I mean, you know, they did. You know, the one call out I want to make, QT Marshall. I cannot underestimate what a great wrestler this guy is. He knows how to play his role. And he knows how to set up and be the guy for a guy like the Kingo and stuff, right? Like, look, he's not Kenny Omega, but he's the, he is such a practiced, practical, you know, solid guy to have around. It's like, that's one of the guys you'd want to work with if you're doing a lot of high flying stuff, because you know, he's got your back. And it was just, it was so obvious watching this match. He was just, he was, timing was good. He was in place. He just, I really thought QT Marshall stood out in this match for me. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And dude, that firm deletion match, I loved it too. What I loved is like the announcers were doing commentary. Like that was part of it. I was just like, really? You're doing commentary to this match? Okay. Um, Using the trees, those suplexes on the ground and stuff. And like, ow, like people took some heavy bumps, right? And oh, who was it? Stokely. I Stokely was my highlight in this whole thing. The dude was hilarious. Like when he's like in the room and he's uh, or when he first sees um uh Matt Hardy's daughter and some weird stuff happens and he yells out Tony Khan will pay for his crimes. <laughs> just about died and oh that maxwell segment that you that you highlighted krishna where he does the swanton off the off the second rope i love that too right and then reba turns him and just says you did good buddy it's time for bed and they just leave <laughs> leaving stokely in the ring it was so funny i loved this match and i loved like the, almost like the dramatic end to it too that i thought was really telling was jeff hardy going out and lighting his symbol in the ground again and he almost looked like he was tearing up and thanking god and i was like wow you know i mean that's pretty damn meaningful coming from jeff hardy so i liked that little cap on the end of it too and all of them standing together so yeah i thought that was a really fun really good match too um yeah so yeah those were my thoughts on the AEW stuff and i'll now turn to the world of japanese wrestling so uh from uh, the world of new japan um there's some news to report that came out of the may 3rd dontaku event and that's mostly what i'm going to talk about today is that event and some of the matches in it um we had the return of yota suji after the main event uh at that show um at that main event sonata defeated hiromo takahashi in a um, iwgp world heavyweight champion championship match and i will get to that match later because damn it was a fun match um but he laid out all five guys of just five guys he then held up the title and he dropped it on sonata and then raised his fist up in the lij symbol so it looks like he's also going to be the newest member of lij they needed a bump they've been being manhandled by just five guys recently like they keep losing almost all their matches against them right and um, it, they needed some strength back. And Yotosuji is, um, you know, probably the guy to do that for them. But wait, 
at this point, you're like, who the heck is Yota Suji? Well, I'm going to tell you. Suji is one of three wrestlers who return from excursion for, that New Japan is working hard on turning into stars. So you had Ren Narita, Shota Umino, and now Yota Suji. These are your three guys that New Japan seems to be working on right now. Uh, Suji is 29. He started in the Young Lion system in 2017 and then left on excursion in August 2021. Since that time, he's mainly been wrestling for RevPro and CMLL uh, with a few matches in other places like WXW. Uh, he's basically a big all-arounder kind of wrestler. His initial trainer, of course, was Tanahashi. Um, I haven't personally seen any of his work. So I'm, I'm now curious to go back and maybe find some of these Rev Pro and CML matches, see what he's like. But I am interested in, like, I want to see what he can do. I'm interested. Um, he's got a certain presence about him that I really like. I think he's going to add a lot of strength to LIJ. So I'm curious. I can't wait to see what happens. Um, other news from that event. Uh, David Finley won the Never Open Weight title from Tama Tonga. And I mean, he didn't just win. Okay. He destroyed Tama Tonga. I mean, destroyed him. He refused to pin him repeatedly, just kept lifting him up over and over and finally reluctantly put him down after a backbreaker. And it was just like, he destroyed the guy, completely wrecked him, right? This was a show of dominance from David Finley. But after the match, a masked man came down to the ring, you can guess who it is, and super kicked Finley, who then bailed, but then the same guy dove on him outside the ring. Of course, when the mask was off and it was who we all knew it would be, it's ELP, El Fantasmo himself. He is now challenging uh, David Finley for that never open weight title. And that should be a hell of a match. So I cannot wait to see that one. Um, we also had um, Okada, Tanahashi, and Ishii as a trios. And they beat Minoru Suzuki, Narita, and El Desperado for the never trios titles. Now, this has some interesting implications to it. Krishna, I hope you're listening. Because Shota Umino came out right after this. Right after Okada Tanahashi and Ishii won those titles. And he challenged them. And he said, one of my partners is going to be John Moxley. So that is what John Moxley will be doing at the... Uh, oh, which show are they uh, challenging on? Ah, oh, do, 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 do. It's not the June 4th Dominion card. It's one of the ones in May, I believe. It's the, the, the one that's, oh, I can't even remember the name of it now. Ah, anyway, they're challenging in May. So, uh, yeah, it'll, it's going to be the three of them or two of them because they have not yet announced their third partner. John Moxley hinted it would be a member of the Blackpool Combat Club. So that could get very interesting. And I wonder, does this have any implications walking into Forbidden Door? Right, because this match, from the best of my knowledge, is happening near the end of May. And if that's the case, is this going to carry over into June 25th? Because I could think of worse things than John Moxley and Blackpool Combat Club guys working with Shota Umino to go after Okada, Tanahashi, and Ishii. I mean, come on. <laughs> like, wow. Anyway, I mean, Ishii. I mean, oh, God, come on. I, I just, I'm, I, I can barely get words out. I'm just like, holy crap, do I want to see that match? Anyway, um, and that brings us then to the main event on that show. I've already told you what happened after with the destruction of just five guys by, um, by the, uh, the returning young lion, Yota Suji. Um, but this match itself, this is one of my recommended matches this week. Sonata taking on Hiromo Takahashi. Uh, the story of this match was whether or not Hiromo Takahashi could become the the first junior heavyweight to win the IWGP heavyweight championship. The crowd was way behind Hiromo. They loved Hiromo. And I mean, I can see why. Hiromo Ta Takahashi has become one of my favorite wrestlers in New Japan. I love the guy. He's just got such a great move set. Fast, fun. He's got a great sense of humor. You know, I just, I like his ring presence. He's so much fun to watch. Um, early on, Takahashi drop kicks Sonata off the apron, put him right into the barricade. He went over the barricade himself and then drop kicks Sonata. On the and the, when Takahashi landed, he, he landed on his back on the concrete floor after the drop kick. Like, ow, I looked at that and went, Are you kidding me right now? I'm like, I'm pretty sure you got the worst of that, buddy. But anyway, Sonata did his uh, you know, his double leapfrog, he did drop kick and then follows it up with a plancha. Um, 
His main drive, though, was to keep going for the skull end early. So he kept going after the skull end, and he did eventually hit it. He then went for his moon salt, and he hit Hiromu in the back, flips him over. He goes for another to the front, but this time Hiromu got his knees up. Um, and then Hiromu hits the time bomb for a near fall. Hiromu then went for the time bomb too, which he's been uh, winning matches with recently. But Sonata countered with a shining wizard. They fought some more. Takahashi hit the time bomb again for another near fall. And then he hit the time bomb too. And the crowd went nuts. I actually bought it a bit. I'm like, are they actually going to do this? Are they taking the title off Sonata and giving it to Hiromu? But Sonata kicked out. And the finish came when Sonata used the skull end. He hit a moonsault with Takahashi right in the center of the ring. Takahashi kicked out of that. Sonata went for the dead fall then, but Hiromu countered with the Hiromu roll for another big near fall. Uh, Sonata then used a leg lariat and he hit the dead fall this time and gets the three. And man, this was a great match. Great match. I, it, it just, the storytelling was great. The whole underdog, can he do it? Can he do it? Story that was in this was good. It was another LIJ versus uh, versus just five guys match. So, you know, there's that, their feud just keeps going. And then of course, Suji came out at the end and just wrecked everybody. So, and seems to be joining LIJ. So yeah, great match. I would highly recommend checking this one out. Um, good stuff. Can't go wrong. Um, we have an update on the New Japan Dominion card on June 4th. So this is their big Dominion show uh, of the year. Uh, so far on this show, we've got Sonata taking on the returning Suji for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. We've got, oh, this is where the uh, David Finley and El Fantasma will be going for the Never uh, Openweight title. We have the IWGP Tag Champions, Aussie Open, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis, going to be taking on Bishamon, Hiroki Goto, and Yoshihashi. And my favorite team, uh, House of Torture, Evil and Yujiro uh, Takahashi. Uh, we also have Lance Archer at that show going to be taking on the winner of Osprey versus Tanahashi. Osprey for the number one contender for the U.S. title. Like, like we need to know who's not. Like, come on. Osprey is so taking that match. It's not even funny. We are going to see Will Osprey, Kenny Omega, Forbidden Door. That's the end of the story. And on that show, we also have so far announced Zack Sabre Jr. taking on Jeff Cobb for the TV title since their last match went to a draw. And some more exciting news, which you'll hear about more in coming weeks. The best of the Super Juniors starts in four days. There will be 10 match cards with round robins. Everyone gets nine matches. Uh, the top two in each block will advance to the semifinals with the second place facing the first place of the opposite block and vice versa. Um, and then this the semifinals happen on May 26th. The finals are on May 28th. So quick little tournament over the next few weeks. That's a lot of wrestling to watch, but there will be some good matches. I will try to find the best ones for you guys and let you know what to check out. Well, you know, and Krishna now knows exactly what I'm going to say. We can't get off a show when I talk about Japan without talking about stardom. Correct? Correct. Because stardom is my favorite wrestling promotion right now. Sorry, AEW. There was a pay-per-view on May 4th, and uh, as of this recording, I haven't watched it yet because it isn't up on Stardom World. I mean, Stardom puts out a lot of pay-per-views. I mean, they're they're almost WWE bad, but the problem is Stardom charges for all of them, or at least WWEs are like on part of their package of like, you know, special events on their streaming services. Um, now, I do get them free, but I have to wait. So like the really big events, I don't mind. Okay, pay-per-view, great, that's fine. A few times a year, that's cool, but like twice in a month, no thanks. So yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for this one on Stardom World. Uh, it'll be up uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere in that neighborhood, and I will report on it in full next week on this show. But for now, I just wanna highlight one match that came out of the, um, the uh, do, 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 April 29th show in Nagoya before the, the uh, before the pay-per-view on May 4th. And this was uh, the main event of the show. It was Club Venus, Mina Shirakawa, Mariah May, and Waka Tsukiyama. As you well know, my, I hate Club Venus. I really do hate Club Venus, but I'm starting to realize there are things I hate more than Club Venus. And Cosmic Angels, Tam Nakano, Natsuboy, and Soriano. And this is, of course, Mina is now the, your white belt champion. Tam is your uh, red belt champion. You've got Natsupoi and uh, Soriano uh, with the artist stardom belts. They're holding those with Kyrie. Um, I found it interesting when the Cosmic Angels came out, they didn't do their dance at all. They just basically like, hey, we're here and walked to the ring. 
Um, Sorry started the match with uh, Mariah and got the advantage, but uh, when she tagged in Waka, the tie the tie turned. Kazan triple teamed Waka, worked her over for a bit, including Tam beating the hell out of Waka. I mean, kicks forearms it was pretty great sorry treated her with a little contempt meaning treated waka with a bit of contempt like just like who the hell are you and hit a nice missile drop kick on her uh waka tagged mariah though who unloaded on all of kazan with chops and then hit an avalanche hurricane run to sorry followed by a diving shotgun drop kick for two sorry came back with a high kick and a bridging fisherman suplex for two i mean a really nice bridge this woman is great okay this is like only one of the first few matches i've seen with her and like wow is she a good wrestler tam nailed mirai with a the violet shooting but mirai blocked the german suplexer and tagged in mina now mina and tam faced off right this is tam versus the uh, person who walked away from cosmic angels um Mina got a slight advantage, but it was erased almost immediately by Natsuboy. Tam tagged out. Natsuboy hit the against the rope drop kicks to Mina, but Mina blocked the German attempt. They went back and forth until Mina locked a figure four, and uh, Natsuboy got the rope break, though. Um, Mina went for the glamorous driver Mina, but Natsuboy fought out and landed a heel kick. Her heel kicks are great. And a German, but Mina dropped Natsuboy in her head with a backdrop driver. I mean, this was a vicious and hard backdrop driver. It looked amazing. Mina tagged in Waku, hit a missile drop kick, her running hip attack. She dumped Natsupoy to the floor where she and Mina hit diving cross bodies. I mean, the one thing I'm going to say, the one little flaw I saw in this one, Mina's, Mina's got to work on that diving cross body. This is the second time I've seen her come up way short on it, right? Like they almost had to move to catch her. Um, Waku then hit the straight jacket slam for two. Natsupoy came back with a big elbow and another heel kick for two. Um, Club Venus then triple team Natsupoy. Waka hit her hammerlock suplex, but Kazan broke it up. Natsupoy continued to work over Waka. She hit the ferial gift, but the pin was broken up, and now the match broke down. He got the waterfall moment. Everyone hitting their big moves everywhere. It ended with Kazan landing triple German suplexes on Club Venus. Yes, for the two. And then Natsupoy nailed the ferial strain on Waka Sukiyama for the three count. And that was the end. Now, this match was great. I mean, there were so many good moves, so much stuff going on. I mean, I would highly recommend this match. It was it was a hell of a lot of fun. And it was good seeing Cosmic Angels take on um, Club Venus, because I think there's going to be a lot more of that in the near future, especially given the post-match promo, because Natsupoy gets a mic. And she screams to the crowd that Cosmic Angels beat that team of traitors today. And then she challenges Mina for the white belt on the May 4th pay-per-view. And she notes that uh, Cosmic Angels is on the cover of, you know, uh, Weekly Pro again. And she holds up the magazine. quite. And of course, all members of Cosmic Angels have a copy of this magazine because they're all proudly showing off that they're on the cover. And then Mina gets the mic and says, yeah, congrats on Weekly Pro, former traitor. And she calls her that because Natsupoy betrayed Donna Del Mundo to join Cosmic Angels originally. Um, and Mina and Natsuboy have never really gotten along. Natsuboy and I came to stardom on the same day, she said, and the way Weekly Pro treated us was heaven and earth. Natsuboy was heaven, of course, and I was earth. Well, now I have the white belt. Natsuboy can take my place next to Tam, but she can't take the white belt from me. After I beat her, I want to fight Tam for the red belt and become double champion. And Natsupoy says, you talk a lot for a loser. Hurry up and go home, traitor. So Mina leaves. <laughs> Sorry looks. And then they do their little celebration. You know, Cosmic Angels closes the, the show. But man, Sorry Anna, the more I see her, the more I love her. She looked so out of place and awkward and just like uncomfortable with the Cosmic Angels closing moves and stuff and looked like she was trying to not support at one point goes and like puts her finger up, up for her and holds it up. And you know cosmic angels number one and you know it was it was it was so funny i love this woman so much she's such a great wrestler her personality like it's it's something else she's just that sort of quiet you know serious and just <laughs> it's so funny seeing her with cosmic angels so anyway i really enjoyed that a whole lot so yeah that is my report from japan what i'm gonna do is I'm going to give my match of the week and my wrestler of the week. So my match of the week, this may or may not come as a surprise to you. Now, I'm assuming people are going to think, because I like Lucha things, I'm going to pick Vikingo, Lucha Brothers versus QTV and Powerhouse Hobbs. Well, you would be incorrect. Now, any other week, that match would have gotten my vote. 
that would be my, my match of the week. This week, however, I'm sorry to say that. And, and hey, maybe you thought I was going to choose the Four Pillars tag team match. Again, you would be wrong. Because the match I'm going to choose is my match of the week is the firm's, or I should say, the final deletion of the firm. It th- Again, I, I just spoke about this match. It was fantastic. I loved it. I love ridiculous. Listen, as much as I, I love, you know, awesome, serious matches, I love ridiculous matches. This match was absolutely, absolutely fantastic. I, I love it from the beginning till the end. I could not stop laughing. Could not stop laughing. Could not believe what I was seeing. I love this match. I think that, you know, this is this is this is definitely my match of the week. So if you have a chance, please go out, see the firm's final, or it's just the final deletion of the firm. Great match. Wrestler of the week. Hmm. This one's a little tricky. So do I think anyone in the final deletion match was wrestler of the week? I'm going to say no. I'm actually going to go back to the first match on Rampage. And I'm going to choose... now. I've chosen uh, Ray. I've chosen Vikingo. I've, I think I may have even chosen uh, Penta before, but I think just watching these guys again, I, I, I wish I could choose all three of them, but Vikingo, this guy is absolutely just, he's he's just insane. So rest of the week, Vikingo, you have, you've, you've gained it. Like this guy is, you're, you're so good. Like I can't, I, I'm just happy to see a lot more of you in AEW. You're so awesome wrestler of the week you rock until wednesday when kenny versus mox and kenny becomes wrestler. but anyways last week wrestler of the week so that being said i'm going to pass over to bill and he's going to give his thoughts his wrestler of the week and match of the week and then close out the show yeah matches of the match and wrestler of the week yeah i got you on this christian i got you um i did actually think you were going to pick the Lucha Brothers and Vikingo match. No lie. I 100% thought that's where you were going. Um, I am not surprised you picked the firm deletion, though. That was actually a really fun match, too. I am going to return to New Japan this week for my match of the week, though. And I am going to say the Sonata versus Hiromo Takahashi match from New Japan Dontaku uh, on May 3rd. That is my marginal match of the week. It was hard to pick one this week because there were a lot of matches I really loved. Right. I mean, I, I love the firm deletion. I love the uh, Lucha Brothers Vikingo uh, QTV match. Sonata versus Hiromu. Right. I mean, there was uh, the Club Venus versus Cosmic Angels. There were some others I saw on the, the 29th card, too, that were good. You know, there's just so much good wrestling to watch this week. But I'm going to have to go with Hiromu versus Sonata for that belt because, you know, I just I liked the story in the match, right? It was it was a good story. It was well wrestled. I really like Hiromu Takahashi. Sonata's starting to impress me more, right? I mean, I wasn't sold on Sonata, um, but he's, he's having some good matches. And, uh, you know, I think, well, I, people in Japan were already sold on him. But, uh, you know, he had to convince me, which for me is, of course, more important. Um, but I love this match. I actually bit for a brief moment with the rest of the crowd, that the title might change hands. Um, I was not surprised when Sonata kicked out, but I just for that one brief moment, you got me. You got me. And so that always helps. I would have given this match about four and a half stars. Uh, just solid, solid wrestling. That's my match of the week. Wrestler of the week. Well, this is always a little, a little trickier um, because we had, again, a lot of good wrestlers. There wasn't one particular person to me that just really stood out but you know who I'm going to give it to simply because I was so thoroughly entertained is Sariana. Because her attitude, her wrestling, first of all, the way that she hits bridges and stuff, it is just like perfect, perfect. I cannot wait to see more of her in stardom. I am going to go back and watch more matches of hers from the, the other uh, the other companies she worked in. Um, she's phenomenal. I want to see more of her wrestling. And her attitude and her approach and the way her character works even in the ring it's like she doesn't break character and you know how much i love guys like that right like psycho mike uh, orange cassidy but her character is so much more subtle it's just serious and quiet 
And, you know, you never quite know what she's thinking, a little bit of intrigue, a little bit of mystery, right? And you can't quite read her. And I, I really like that. Like, you never know if she's with you or is she secretly plotting against you behind your back, right? Like, it's really hard to tell with her just from her facial expression. So it's, I, I love that. And her wrestling is just so top notch, so top notch. So yeah, great pickup by Stardom to get her. And I can't wait to see more. So for that, I am giving her my wrestler of the week. But that brings our show to a close. And as the great one always says, take it away, Krishna. Goodbye, everyone. And good night, bang. Good night, everyone.